Los Angeles may have the reputation for being a smog-filled city, but a new study says people who live in the metropolitan area have the second smallest carbon footprint in the country. A Brookings Institution report says LA's dense population, relatively low heating and cooling needs, and use of cleaner fuels make the difference. Over 25 years, Californians and California regulators have been very attuned to these energies and have, uh, this, these effort issues and have been purchasing lower energy, uh, lower carbon energy for a long time. Only one city does better than LA, Honolulu. The study looked at how much carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere for every person who lives in a region. CO2 is considered a key greenhouse gas. On the other end, Lexington, Kentucky tops the list for largest carbon footprint. On average, each resident releases nearly three and a half metric tons of carbon dioxide each year. Indianapolis ranks second. Lexington and many of the southern and, and midwestern uh, metros, uh, you know, have not, uh, they have had traditionally very cheap electricity. They've had traditionally very cheap land. Uh, and they do require heating and cooling. The study looked at emissions from vehicles and the energy used in homes. It does not take into account commercial or industrial sources. There are regional differences. Cities east of the Mississippi generally do worse than those west of the river. People living in cities south of the Mason-Dixon line generally have a higher carbon footprint than those to the north. The West is the only region that decreased its carbon emissions over a five-year period. It grew in every other region, with the per-person increase highest in Trenton, New Jersey. We're part of the problem, not the solution. We're sleeping in this country. Sprawl makes it harder for people to reach mass transit and makes people more reliant on cars. If people didn't have to commute so far to come to work and they could work in local offices, you would not have that down here. Traffic control would be one thing. Smaller cars, perhaps high gas prices will take care of it when people stop driving so much. I would love to see us uh, try to encourage people to walk more. I've, I think maybe we could reduce if we had incentives for people to park and ride. The Brookings report says solutions shouldn't be limited to driving less. Places need to look at where they're getting their energy and whether it's coming from coal or cleaner sources. Uh, they need to price it appropriately so that it actually can change behavior. The report concludes metropolitan areas and the federal government need to work together to change policies to reduce carbon emissions. Matt Friedman, The Associated Press.